There's a verse I wanted to uh, talk about tonight. I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, but this is, but this is how it goes. Uh, the happiness of the three worlds disappears in a moment, like a, dew, like a dew drop on a blade of grass. The highest level of freedom is one that never changes. Aim for this. This is the practice of the Bodhisattva. I'll read it again. Sir. The happiness of the three worlds, by the way, the three worlds is past, present, and future. Normally, mean three worlds. The happiness of the three worlds disappears in a moment, like a dewdrop on a blade of grass. The highest level of freedom is one that never changes. Aim for this. This is the practice of a bodhisattva. Well, uh, the really interesting line in this is, to me, is the highest level of freedom is one that never changes. <coughs> well, given that one of the three marks of existence in Buddhism is impermanence, mm -hmm. it seems unlikely that you're going to find anything that never changes. So what, this is quite a well-known verse, you know, so it's uh, the highest level of freedom is one that never changes. So, the first line is quite easy, isn't it? The happiness of the three worlds disappear in a moment. So, uh, I think pr we're probably all by now, if we're, if we're over five years old, know that the pursuit of happiness uh, is uh, always going to end in failure. <laughs> I, I know that the Dalai Lama said that the uh, whole intention of uh, Buddhism was to be happy. But I'm not sure that uh, he meant to be happy, what he, how he defines happiness, but... Uh, Can we say it's temporary success rather than failure? Yeah, <laughs> I could ask, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've obviously <laughs> been reading those positive, you know, <laughs> books about, yeah, life-affirming changes in your life, whatever, yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's, uh, clearly it's transient. Uh, because unlike this freedom that never changes, conditions change all the time, and if happiness is dependent on conditions, then, uh, you know, none of us are going to be free from pain or difficulties or all the things that arise in our lives outside of the good times. Yeah. Uh. Since so that verse about um, the the, hef the highest level of happiness is the one that never changes, yeah. and how you contrasted um, the impermanence reminds me of the liar's paradox. Oh, okay. A liar says, "I'm a liar." Is he a liar, or is he telling the truth? So, if you say, "If everything always changes," Is that change changing or not changing? Well, I suppose impermanence does include the possibility of non-impermanence. <laughs> if we want to be, yeah, play with it, yeah. Thank you. Um, and, you know, and it's not just happiness that's transient. I mean, you know, we, we all commit ourselves uh, well, people come into the practice, certainly into this tradition, because of its um, history of, of kind of breakthroughs and transcendental experiences and dropping off body and mind and experience emptiness and all these things, you know, that we all aspire to. Um, they all pass as well. I've, I've not met anybody that uh, lives permanently in the transcendent. <laughs> maybe they are, maybe they do exist, but I've not I've, Maybe you've met some, I haven't. But, um, so, you know, that's the kind of traditional view, in a way, of spiritual practice, isn't it? This search for happiness. And, um, you know, in Zen we have Nirvana, and in Christianity they have Heaven. And uh, I think the Vikings had Valhalla, didn't they? Was that Valhalla that they had? Mm -hmm. Where if you're a great in battle, you'd end up in heaven. Uh, in Valhalla, I mean. And then, you know, we have, in, apart from Nirvana, we have, what? Well, uh, 
dropping off of the self. So there's you know emptiness. So there's not nothing there to experience suffering. We have all these aspirations to it, um, but if we were to really pursue them as as a reality, <coughs> my feeling is that they're actually uh, a mistaken. What's the right word? Um, displacement activity to try and cut out all the possibilities of any difficulties in our life or any unhappiness. You know, we'll, go, we'll, 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 we'll get there and it'll all be fine. We'll be, we, won't be, we won't be unhappy ever again. Um, and, you know, an interesting question is for all of us is out of this is why do you practice? You know, what is your intention? What is it that you'd really aspire to? What is it that you would really like to find in the practice? What is it that, what, what, what ideas do you have about it or concepts or hopes or aspirations? What is it that, uh, that you want? <laughs> do you <give> in? <laughs> do you know? Have you thought about it? Yeah. I, I, to, to me, um, I was writing about this for the, for the, to, to, for the, the blog later on. I was thinking like, and the name, and I said that it, you know, it, it, it's possible to have a name. I would say my aim would be to sort of, <coughs> just to sort of, um, to try and stay in the gap. Okay. I came from one and nothing to the thinking and the mm. stories I tell myself, and just to sort of rest in that gap, so at, at least, Occasionally, I've got that sort of sense of freedom where I can choose and I'm not reacting all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I just keep it as simple as that. I mean. We talked about it earlier. Was it, was, it, was it with you, Keith, when we talked about the word just? No, it was me. You, it was, it was no, you, it yeah, was me. you just, yeah. in what you're saying, you used the word just three times, yeah. and I'm thinking, Fantastic, but it's not it's not just in the sense of mere. It's like yeah. what you're describing is really difficult. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not just it's, it's like hard, it's, it's Yeah, hard. yeah, you can miss the just out. Yeah. All the time I'm going yeah. off on yeah. Yeah. It's work. It's real work. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Andy, you yeah, for me I think it's something to do with feeling more grounded and less swayed by mood changes and by the temporary things. Okay. Um, and I'm finding that with practice that I do f things feel more often on even keel that I can, you know, shit happens and it's okay. Yeah. It's just shit and it'll pass. And then the high times come and that's great. Enjoy it, but you know it's not going to last. And it's, <laughs> it, it's somehow more more even. There's an okay. even keel. And I, I don't know if I, that was my aim when I started, but it's certainly something that experience now. So can I just summarize it so because there's some pressure to have a talk tonight and run out to talk so I'll just they won't be able to hear you folks who will, will be listening. To stay on an even keel that's kind of summarizing yeah. what you what you said yeah great thank you. Yeah. So nobody's looking for a kind of transcendental, timeless, eternal feeling of... <sighs> yeah, I feel like I'm looking for more um, clarity of purpose. Clarity of purpose, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, don't, I think because you, you say it a lot in teaching that, uh, you know, to appreciate this life fully as it is, mm -hmm. um, um, is, is an aspiration. Um, at the same time as letting it go, or being, being ready to let it go at any moment, because yeah. it, it can disappear very quickly, mm. or, or you know, people you love yeah. can disappear very quickly. So, at the same time as celebrating and appreciating it, uh, that's a real aspiration to, is to not, <laughs> not be too conditioned by it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you're saying reminds me of um, there's so many paradoxes in this tradition, but you know when we sit. 
we sit we, we, when we sit we, we sit both doing and we're, we're both being and doing when we sit so we're being so for people who like to do things this it allows them to be <laughs> it allows them it allows people to do being <laughs> and, and also you know the paradox uh, Dogen points out that we sit both knowing that we're absolutely fine and everything's fine and at the same time there's work to be done so we, we, we sit with those paradoxes all the time um, so just to clarify then your, your aspiration or your intention in practice is not because you think you're going to escape the messiness of your life is that right? or do you think you're going to escape the messiness of your life? I'm interested I, I was thinking like you know the, the idea of that bigger container yeah you know so the messiness is there or I've just got more of an, an ability to to be with it and to manage it and okay. to manage it yeah because yeah. at times it's, it's like a thimble you know and, and I'll, <laughs> like a thimble yeah you know so yeah. I'm just cultivating more of a yeah. uh, you know an openness to things and yeah to accept more okay maybe that's where we at the door we should have this way out of messiness <laughs> yeah but on the door you come in and you oh messiness is all cleaned up <laughs> yeah, abandon messiness all you who enter here. Oh, yeah, abandon <laughs> messiness all you who enter practice, yeah. That would be... I think we, I think we may be prosecuted under the Advertising Act for that. <laughs> so, in the line... Okay, so we, the first two lines are okay then. The happiness of the three worlds disappears in a moment, like a dewdrop on a blade of grass. <clears throat> and then the next line is the highest level of freedom is one that never changes so what is this freedom that never changes what is it is it What's that space that um, Keith was talking about when you're in that space you, you, you're in your freedom aren't you which space the space between you know awareness of what's happening here that you, you're not embroiled in it you're yeah. able to watch it you're able to you're watch it that. yeah yeah. To me, that's like um, are you liberated. That's, that, that, that feels like freedom to you, does it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I like what then DT Suzuki said. It said then, reading this the day, he said then, talking about the name. He said the aim of Zen is to catch life as it flows. Okay. And I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Give me something a little hook to where it's not time to hook. So what is this freedom? Apart from your definition, your understanding of it, yeah. What is this? What is this freedom that doesn't change? Is it to be present? To be present. To be present to what? To what it is. To, to what? What is? This moment. Okay, yeah. Whatever. But, uh, whose moment? Just, just, just this. Just, just wherever. Okay. My life. Your life, yeah. Yeah. To be present to the moment, each moment in your life, I guess. Well, as Keith said, what was, what was it Suzuki said to be? To, uh, to, the aim of Zen is to catch life as it flows. To catch life as it flows, yeah. But the, the irony here is you'll flow on yourself. So. It's a funny phrase that, to catch life as it flows implies you can kind of mm. grab it like a yeah. river you know and it just you can't can you you know it's it, it's the flow it makes it flow, yeah. it just flow, so yeah. don't know why you do it with your awareness does it mean does it mean so yeah, i was thinking you know, what never um, changes that things never stop changing mm. so i guess the real freedom is just to, to go along with that change yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. The only unchanging thing is yeah, things ever everything change. changes. Yeah. yeah. So freedom is you know we've said it, it's as many ways of saying it, but can you really embrace your life on a moment-to-moment -moment basis? I mean, I get bored 
you probably get bored with me saying I get bored saying it to myself because I fail all the time. But can you <laughs> embrace your life on a moment to moment basis? Even when it's painful, even when it's difficult. And I think I had a conversation with somebody, uh, and that, you know, that, that in fact, uh, embracing those difficult and painful times is the time when you really start to uh, find inspiration and fear and, and security in yourself and more confidence in yourself. Mm. You know that you can, that you can manage it. And it's only by resisting it all the time or evading it that you, you know, you, you constantly remain slightly on edge and, and, and insecure because you don't think you're going to be able to manage it. So, um, So what, what's, what, are the, what do you experience as the things that stop you feeling this freedom, this, this, this willingness to take on board and embrace all the things that go on in your unique life, you know, each is your unique life, you absolutely stand in the only place in the universe where anybody can experience what you're experiencing, it's completely unique. How how do you how do you? Uh, what is it that, that stops you uh, uh, really feeling it? You know, really owning what you are. What is it that stops? I think for me, at least a part of it is a fear of losing loss and losing things. So it's like I'm trying to pin everything down, yeah, yeah. grasp onto things. Yeah. But what I've realised uh, just recently is that, like you were saying before, I mean, I'm not saying I do this all the time, but I've just realised something, that if on the times that I can embrace what appears to be a loss, some new thing will come. Mm. So it's like something dies, something else is born. And that happens on so many levels. Mm. That's that's helping me a lot to <laughs> yeah. to try and remember yeah. that. And in a way, something has to die for something you to be exactly, born, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So it's, I was thinking, you know, um, on a personal level, it's some of it's to do with the environment to find yourself in. You know, the condition that. I'm, I'm subject to, so whether it be advertising or TV or expectations of, you know, maybe being a parent or a son or all yeah. these things that are, are fed to me in terms of what I'm supposed to be doing, yeah. mm. you know, um, and how, how do we deal with that and, and still be true to what I feel or, you know, expressing myself in, in my own way. Yeah. So I feel like you know, I'm in a way you can push and pull by different... Yeah, yeah, it's well said, I mean, you know, that's what stops us, you know, the projections, the ideas, the story we tell ourselves of, of you know, of how we should be, mm -hmm. that have arisen from our life experience and what, you know, happened when we were kids, the whole, you know, we carry this whole package around of, of how it should be. <laughs> it never is. <laughs> so For me, Sensei, I think the barrier a lot of the time is sloth and inertia. <laughs> <laughs> sloth and inertia is the barrier to your dear freedom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because if, if I make the effort, I can really kind of get the juice of things. Yes, yeah. And, and see, you know, the freshness that, that comes even with loss. Uh, but actually, that's a hell of an effort to be okay. open at that level. It's really interesting. So what's the origin of the sloth and the inertia? What's the resistance? Is it energy or is it like you just don't want to go there? Or? I've, 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 I've never, never ever experienced you with a person with any sloth or inertia at all, so this is a revelation of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, 
it is. It is that. It's a laziness. It's it's a sort of uh, settling into ease. Okay. Like a kind of couch potato type yeah. ease. Yeah. 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 Can't be asked. Can't be asked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is, is there any is there any downside to that? Is there any reason not to be like? Well, I'm, I'm kind of working on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite enjoying snot. I'm thinking maybe it's okay. You know, maybe this is the way forward. <laughs> I even sat in a book. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what's interesting about this whole thing, you know, all that we talk about, for me anyway, there's this whole industry, a bit like dieting, you know, there's a whole industry out there about how to be happy. All kinds of ways and methods. Uh, well, I think the probably like all those dieting books, they <laughs> mostly don't work. Because the intention is intrinsically unlikely to happen. I suppose the paradox is that, that it's, uh, it's, you know, the, it's a horrible metaphor, but I read some, somebody said that uh, Zen is like licking a razor blade. It's like you're always on this edge of paradox, you know. Uh, so, yeah. The, is it is is in fact being at ease with your life? In, does that include the fact that you're happy to be unhappy? Yeah. So it's it's got that. There's a, there's all different layers in it. It's quite hard to you know. It's, you have to be really careful with the words you use. I suppose another aspect of it for me is it, whether, whether the net result is happiness or unhappiness. Awareness of actually what's happening in the moment yeah. <coughs> is really hard to practice, isn't it? Because, yeah. because it makes you realise, I've just been thinking a lot recently um, about TV, that, that I, I, I'm really getting to a point I don't want to subject myself for, to random violence and suffering and misery. Yeah every night. <laughs> That's before I switch on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's different, it, you know, so you've got your box sets and you've got your programs and you've got your thrillers and you, then you've got the news, you know, and it's, it's not like I'm not practicing compassion or I'm not, I'm not feeling for it, but, but there's, there's so much of it mm. and it, it's on, you know, it's random. Yeah. And constantly battering you, so I'm supposed to be aware of that is to be able to do something about it. <coughs> I wish I had more stamina for that. I've got none, man. We, we, what we got through this, we got to the second episode of Breaking Bad, and that's stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Since, uh, actually, paradoxically, for me, I think forgetting is quite important. Forgetting? Um, because it's a bit like, um, don't think of the pink elephant. Yeah. Um, when I kind of say, um, we might keep reminding myself, got to roll with the chains, got to roll with the chains, got to roll with the chains. And I actually get m um, myself fixed on got to roll with the chains. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that actually has proven to be rather detrimental rather than helpful mm -hmm. on, on a number of occasions. So sure. for me, I think it's actually quite important to have a laugh and say, <laughs> I think it is for you because you've spent so much time studying and striving. And for you, it's excellent, you know, to, to, to just roll with. And then, yeah. if I actually can let myself forget, I will actually roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. But then you see, we've got the sloth and lazy folk. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> okay, let's give the vows. Thank you.